Hello, and welcome to episode 166 of the Casual Try Hard Podcast. I'm Brian. And I'm James. And we're talking about the economy, baby! Oh, boy. <laughs> this ought to be interesting. <laughs> it should be fun. Yeah. So, if you want to hit us up about your thoughts on the Magic Arena economy, all of our social links are in the uh, description, so you can find us there and tweet us about how how you're maximizing your arena bucks or whatever <laughs> your arena bucks sure we'll call them that um yeah and i guess also on the topic of money we would like some <laughs> so if you're looking i gotta up- buy these gyms <laughs> somehow man <laughs> that's right so if you're looking to pick up any singles from kamigawa or you know whatever else that you've missed you're looking to pick up singles for we would appreciate if you use our tcg player affiliate affiliate link it's tcg.casualtryhardmtg.com. Uh, follow that link, and then whatever you do after that, whatever you purchase, we'll get a percentage of that helps to support the show. We really appreciate it. If you guys want to yeah. support us a little bit more directly, you can do so at patreon.com slash casualtryhardmtg. Patrons get access to our show notes. Uh, they get access to our pre-show, which is kind of just us rambling for a while. A lot of te- technical difficulties we were trying to overcome in this pre-show, so sorry about that, guys. Um, but that's what the pre-show there's was. There's apparently an on button <laughs> that I needed to hit. Who knew, right? <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> but that's what the pre-show is. It's unscripted, unedited, us making sure our equipment works and we're uh, competent enough to figure it out. And also just kind of us catching up. We don't see each other nearly as much as we used to, so we catch up during the pre-show and bringing all our patrons along for the ride. You never know what we're going to talk about. Um so if you want access to that and all the other stuff our patrons get, also swag once in a while, usually every month or two, I send something out to you guys, uh, sign up for our Patreon. Like I said, patreon.com slash casual MTG. Throw a couple bucks in there, I'll put you on my mailing list, and you'll have access to all of the additional stuff that we do. So make sure you check that out. Also, we have our YouTube channel that we are now producing like actual episodes for instead of just exporting our audio to youtube like we used to do we have uh live streams with some ideas from our listeners in discord today we have uh cards and we are the cards we are the cards wave to the people brian hello my hand in the card there we go hello people (laughs) i have a car i have a 2020 flying indestructible (laughs) oh i'm just decayed that's just a a bummer i think i got the short end of the stick (laughs) Yeah, twenty twenty. Yeah, both of our bodies. Both of our decayed. bodies have turned on us. We're both <laughs> decayed on some level. Yeah, I think so. But if you want to follow follow along and watch us, and I think we're going to change up these cards once in a while too. So it might be fun for you guys to see what cards we pick each week. Um, head on over to YouTube and subscribe, and you know, follow along. We should we should have a uh, a poll as to what our cards should be, like every couple of weeks. Yeah, you're asking a lot. How would we do that in Discord? Is there like a poll bot or something we can we can do? I'm sure. I'm sure there is. I'm sure there's someone smarter than us that like knows exactly how to do this. Yeah, I'm sure we have a whole bunch of listeners that are way more tech savvy than we are. Yeah. Somebody put up a poll. Somebody put up a poll. There we go. <laughs> you have homework. Get on Discord. <laughs> put up a. Do our jobs for us. <laughs> oh. Man. All right. So we got anything else? Or are we going to jump into this? I think we'll just jump into this. Okay. All right. So. The long-awaited economy stream happened on uh, uh, whatever whatever that the, the Magic uh, Twitch channel, whatever that show is, Weekly MTG. That's yeah. it. It was on Thursday, and, I think. Yes, uh, and then they released an accompanying article mm-hmm. about the economy, mm-hmm. and um, so. I wanted to bring something up, like, as we start, like, you know, they, they define what economy is mm-hmm. and all that jazz in the article. But um, I wanted to bring something up from one of the original developers of Arena, mm-hmm. and that is Ryan Spain. He's the original host of Limited Resources with Marshall, Yep. and he has his own uh, Twitch channel called Going Optimal. Mm-hmm. Where he has um, he has a paid arena account, and then he has a totally free to play arena account okay. that he only drafts on both of them. And 
his entire um, YouTube channel or Twitch channel is devoted to going optimal both in play and in like your arena money usage. Okay. So, um, he was on LR a few years ago and was talking about arena and he described arena as an engine Mm -hmm. that is there to make wizards money. Chad. Chad, bro, bro, turn up the engine. Yep. Crank it up. Yeah. Bro, more horsepower. (laughs) Uh, All right. So, um, and so anytime they turn a knob, it changes the output of the engine. Mm -hmm. So they can tune it to make any amount of money they want. Mm -hmm. Right? So anything that they do that you feel is more generous, that means they've tuned the engine down and they make less money on the other side. Mm -hmm. So they have to balance what their like point of view is is we make this much money and so if we give them something over here we have to take something away on the other side so that we keep the engine making an equal amount of money or more mm-hmm. right so i mean that's well, what they're there for though right is to make money like wizards are absolutely company. yeah like absolutely, that is like Not that is magic their out of the kindness of their hearts. Yes, that is the whole thing. So I think that like, well, the players look at arena as a way for them to play the game. Right. They often lose sight of the fact that like wizards has to make money, or wizards has to because of shareholders and corporate cultures and whatever has to make lots of money. You can't like go to your you can't, as Hasbro, go to your shareholders and go, well, we decided to make Arena more generous, so we lost $150, $150 million in profits last year to this year. Right. Because right? then your stock gets hammered, mm-hmm. and like you lose a ton of shareholder value, and people are mad at you. Well, I mean, you also Slash have like, operating capital. Yeah. Slash, like, could have lawsuits for, like, you know... Right. Screwing up, screwing up your company. Yep. So, like, everything that we're talking about, like, we have to look through the lens of, like, Arena's there to make the money. Mm-hmm. And they can't just go, like, eh, we're not going to have it make money now. Right. So, just keep that in mind. So, like, in their eyes, every time they give you a gem, they have to take a gem from somewhere else. Or a gem's worth of whatever they're taking. A gem's worth of value has to leave somewhere. Yep. Right. So, all right. So that was my first little like preamble here. No, I mean that's important. It's a good thing to keep in mind, and it helps. That fact helps to kind of put some of this other stuff in perspective, especially when we start talking about like, you know, dusting or you know whatever else we're going to talk about, like. All of that stuff has to come from somewhere. They're not just going to give yeah. it to you. So yeah, it's keep that fact in mind get, as we talk about the rest of this. Yeah, something's going to get more expensive, or something's going to become less generous. Yep. Right. So there was one other the thing the- that I thought oh. was kind of important um, that they kind of you know led the stream off with that I think a lot of people kind of glossed over as well, like. I'm going to spoil the, like this episode for you guys. Um, I'm a little bit less down on this stream in general than a lot of people are. I mean, there's certainly criticisms to make and, you know, things that I'm not super happy with, but like in general, I think the stream was fine. Um, just about everybody on social media is hammering it pretty hard. And, you know, s- some of the criticisms are warranted, but I don't, I don't know that the whole stream was, was terrible. I think that some of the things they said made sense. So. Spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> um, so at the start of the stream, they did bring up that this is the start of the conversation, not the end. Correct. And I know that this is not always a reassuring thing to hear from Wizards because, like, we're going to have an economy stream, like, was a meme for six months to a year? Was it that long? I, I thought it was something like that. I thought it was a it's few been months. a while. I don't know if it was quite a year, but. Okay. But, so, like, oh, we're going to deal with this, we're going to deal with this, and then I think that the 
how it was addressed, people were like, I think it's a question of like build up and expectations. Mm -hmm. I think people, hey, this has been promised for a while. This is probably going to be a really big announcement. Mm -hmm. And so I think the reason that people were so negative was uh, less the, like the content wasn't great, Mm. but they had pumped up in their minds. Right. Like, oh man, Wizards has been talking about this stream for months and they're finally going to do it. They've probably put together a plan Mm -hmm. and they're going to be able to talk about like what's going on. And it's like, have you not remembered anything that's happened with Wizards with anything for the last two years? I mean, can I pump the brakes for just a second though? Sure. To be fair, and again, I'm going to kind of be devil's advocate here. Um, Wizards didn't really promote this stream at all. Like they yeah. had mentioned it a couple times in the weekly MTG. And honestly, the first time Blake said, I, I think we owe you guys like an economy stream or whatever. I don't, I don't think anybody like had plans of ever doing an economy stream. Like until I, he I said agree. it on the show, I fully expect nobody was ever going to talk about the economy. Like, I, he probably I feel got like in it, trouble for saying that. Yes, I, I agree. I'm assuming it was a throwaway line. Yeah. And then it just kept getting brought up every single solitary stream yeah. to the point where he got browbeat to the point where he had to do it. Yeah. So, and like, I think that PK is kind of to blame for this because, you know, every time he would do a weekly MTG and somebody would ask about the economy stream and he would say, you know, either it's coming or we owe it to you guys or whatever. Like, I mean, PK was right on top of it like blasting them for not doing it like whipping everybody up into a frenzy like i, I, I don't under- think wizards was you know promoting this at all no it was like everybody else no, but kind of jumping it, on the at bandwagon. least yeah but like at least they've known it was a, a topic mm-hmm. and i again i don't i don't blame wizards for failing the expectations game because mm-hmm. they weren't playing an expectations game correct Right, I think that everyone in many people in the magic community had really high expectations for this for no reason, yes, exactly, and then their expectations were not met, so they were super mad mm-hmm. as magic players are wont to do, right, yeah, I mean, it, like they had never said that they were changing anything. They exactly. just said we owe you like an explanation or whatever. Yeah, and everyone's like okay. expecting all these sweeping changes and. Yeah, so we we were talking in our chat that it was like people were upset because they were expecting an overhaul. Yeah, but at no point did anyone ever mention on the wizard side that there was going to be an overhaul or like even like a tune-up. Right. It was just like we'll talk about it. Yeah. Right. I think that people were like, from the player point of view, and it's a certain type of player. Yes. Right? That the economy is prohibitively bad in terms of like acquisition of cards. Yeah. So, from their point of view, they're like, this is really, really bad. Clearly, Wizards has to see this is really, really bad. Mm -hmm. So, they need, clearly, they're going to fix it because. They see what I see that it's really bad. But from Wizards' point of view, they just see the engine spitting out money. And that's really good. Right. Really good. Right. Like really good. Billion with a B good. Yeah. So what are the what were the things that kind of came out of the stream that like they are that they promoted? So what were the what were the things that they that were were kind of the changes or yeah. are the changes? So they are gonna make two changes. And like, there's some other things that are either in the works or like at least being discussed that we'll kind of get into as the episode goes along, but they did announce two changes. Um, the first, for some reason is that they think everybody on arena is a completionist. They, I mean, they didn't actually say that they actually said that, you know, the amount of players that are completionists are very small. But to those players, um, they're offering a Mythic Booster Pack, 
which is the same as a regular booster pack, except you're guaranteed a mythic in it instead of a rare. And it's 1,300 gold instead of 1,000 gold. So I don't know if they misspoke or I miss, like, red or something, but it made it sound like the mythic pack you were guaranteed a mythic or a rare wild card. Oh, maybe. And I don't, maybe I missed that part. I, I may have misheard, because I remember... I just remember distinctly thinking, like, why would I want a rare wild card for my, like, mythic hmm. pack? So... Maybe it was I a mythic be... or a mythic rare wild card. Yeah. So I might be... Um, I may have misheard that I'm, like, trying to find the... I put a link the, to the article in the uh, show notes. Yeah, I'm trying to find it in the... Um, in the article. In the article, yeah. Uh, the problem is if I just, like, search for Mythic... Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's an overused keyword. It's an over... Yeah, it's it's hard to... Uh, it's hard to, to find. Uh, and they use the word booster a lot in here as well. Yeah. So... Uh, Okay, so there you go. We'll ensure the rare or mythic slot is always a mythic rare unless replaced by a wild card. Hmm. So you'll get a mythic or a rare wild card. Yeah, it's kind, I of, guess, kind or, of awkward. Or a mythic wild card. Yeah, I don't know if it would be you would always get a mythic wild card if you're going to get a wild card. Maybe I would I would hope if I paid the premium. Yeah. So this is three hundred more gold for this product. So it's a peck and a third, ish. Which, which is, you know, the the people you do end up getting all of your rares, mm -hmm. and then you're often short a bunch of mythics. Mm -hmm. So it's probably worth it to just be able to instead of buying fifty packs of. Um, Kamigawa, you know, Kamigawa, to try to get your the mythic that you want, yeah. you can buy the mythic pack of Kamigawa in hopes of getting the mythic that you want. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the other thing that they gave us, and I think that's fine, right? It's like, fine. Like, I don't know, I, I don't know how many people are actual completionists. Um, we kind of mm -hmm. talked a little bit about this in the pre-show about. You know, th there's been a couple different um, posts on the internet going around. I think you said you saw one on Twitter. I saw one on Reddit a while back. And we talked about it on the show once or twice, too, that this number of, like, 25 drafts, somebody had posted that, like, mm -hmm. 25 drafts, you should be able to get, you know, most of the, most or all of whatever set you're drafting. Um, I don't necessarily think that's 100% true, but... I know I do less than 25 drafts typically per set and I might not have a complete set when I'm done, but I've got just about everything that I would ever put into a deck. Yeah. I think that like the, like this is you, but I bet you you're missing a couple mythics, right? Probably, you know, but I don't know that they're know, what, playable mythics either. I'm, I'm thinking like, let's say the, the dragons from Kamigawa, right? Let's say that the black dragon is playable, mm -hmm. right? And you want to play four in your deck. Yeah. Right? You drafted, you opened your packs, you might only have two. Mm -hmm. Right? So you either spend wild cards, which you may or may not have, to get the last two. Mm -hmm. Or this gives you the option to be like, I'll, like, I'm missing 15 or I'm missing... 30 of the total mythics in the in the set. I'm going to buy you know 10 mythic booster packs mm -hmm. and I will have a pretty good chance of getting one and maybe I'll get lucky and get two of that mythic. Yep. And then I'll be done. As opposed to I've got to buy literally 150 regular Kamigawa packs right. to try to open that mythic or you know, I've got to open 50 Kamigawa packs to get my Mythic Wild card, to move the Wild Card wheel twice. Yeah. Right, so this is good. And I think that, like, you know, what I pot asked later on is, I know they're using data and they see people that are, like, completing sets. 
But, like, is that Seth better known as Saffron <laughs> Olive trying to get, like, you know, the last red dragon he needs for a deck or people actually completing sets? Yeah. Right? Like, how much? Oh, man, this person has all the rares and is only missing three mythics and they just bought a hundred packs. Why? Oh, they must be trying to complete the set. It's like, no, they need three more mythics yeah. to build whatever, like, terrible deck they want to build. So, like, I don't know, like, how much of it is, is I need my last Hetsugu uh, that consumes all. Yeah. And how much of it is, like, ooh, I hate having not gold diamonds over my cards. <laughs> yeah. So, it's one of those, like, Yes, the data is telling you people are completing sets, but are they completing sets because they want to complete sets? Or, or are they completing sets? Be yeah, because they're forced to. Yeah. And then the other thing that uh, collectively stroked out all of the internet yeah. was the sweet, sweet wildcard pack. Yeah, so you get 12 rare and 4 mythic wildcards for 50 bucks. Delgate. Why would you ever do this? And why would Wizards think this is a good idea? So this is the thing that I think if this wasn't here yeah. and it was status quo, people would complain, but they would not have complained as much. Oh, that's I a think good this, point. I hadn't thought of that. I think this is what drove everyone over the deep edge. That could very well right? be. Right? Like, because this is just downright insulting. Oh, yeah, it is a spit in the face. This is Wizards saying, oh, yeah, I'll give it to you. So I, I tweeted out that a Wizards identified what the economy problem was, and that was clicking the open 10 packs button <laughs> five times. Yeah. And so, hey, we're going to eliminate you having to click that open 10 packs button mm -hmm. by just doing this. So Frank Carson did the math, and I don't have it up. But basically, if you were to open, if you were to spend $50 on packs, mm -hmm. you get roughly 46 packs. And you would, on average, get like eight rares and three mythic wild cards opening those 50 packs or 46 packs or whatever. Yep. Not counting any vault progress, not counting all the rares and mythics you got just for opening that were in those packs. Yeah. Right. So, this is basically the exact same price for less. Way less. And so, like, people had, like, a collective meltdown. Mm -hmm. Because, like, this was... On some, on some level, this was, like, Wizards' big fix to the economy. Yeah. Like, okay, we heard you. You don't want to just have to open endless packs... Right, you don't want to have to spend whatever a hundred gems to open a pack that has just twenty gems in it. Right, right. It sucks. We understand. So we're just gonna sell you the wild cards for the exact same price <laughs> as you would have got them from opening packs. So you, in fact, get less. Yeah. So I think that this price is a bait and switch. I mean, that's what like, it seems like. Wizards is notorious for, like, coming up, like, floating an idea, watching Twitter dissolve into chaos. Twitter's good at that. Yes. And then a few weeks later, go, like, you know, we really heard you guys, and, you know, we thought about it, and that price point really wasn't fair. We're going to make it thirty five ninety nine. Right, that could be. And now they they're like still the gonna get. Yeah, they're still gonna get theirs. Yeah. Right, but um, because what they want, right, is they want this. Like, they should want it to be like a decision. Mm -hmm. Oh, am I just gonna get the? Am I gonna just get the the wild card bu uh, bundle, or am I gonna buy the packs? Right, right now it's almost this isn't like a decision. Right, you just buy the packs. You just buy the packs. So, I think that this uh, was a problem. So, like, another thing is, 
I pointed this out on Arena Decklist, and I kind of agree, right? If you look at Magic Online, Magic Online, the pack prices were tied to the pack of a physical pack of Magic cards. Yeah, they're the same price, right? Yeah, they're the exact same. When they changed the MSRP, they changed the price on Magic Online. Yeah. It seems like they tied the wild card pack price to what it would cost you to get these cards in paper. Oh, that's an interesting right? idea. So, as they point out, like, how much is a standard deck? About 200 bucks. Yeah, two, 300 bucks. How many, how many rares or mythics are in your average standard deck? About 40 mm -hmm. to 45. Yeah. Right? So you buy four rare or mythic uh, packs, you get a $200 standard deck. Hmm. Right? And we've shown that we'll pay $200 for a standard deck, and it's like, well, Kinda. Yeah, but you'd be sometimes you sometimes you crack your pack and you get a uh, what's it called? You get a uh, meat hook massacre, mm -hmm. and you took forty dollars off the price of your deck. Yeah, right. But like you can also cash out, and like, that's you can't the cash thing. out on arena. You can cash out on Magic online. You can cash out on paper. You can't cash out on arena. Right. So this is just all sunk money for you. Right. And another thing is the way we interact with magic is very different now, mm -hmm. right? Because I was thinking about, like, pre-arena standards, mm -hmm. right? And right, you would watch a Pro Tour, you'd see the Seasons Pass deck, right? Oh, sweet. What would, hap what would happen in, like, your LGS's group chat? Oh, hey, I'm going to build this deck. Does anyone have X, Y, or Z? Yeah. Right? And maybe that first week or two, you just borrow the cards, mm -hmm. right? Like this is what I have. This is what I'm. I I need. Maybe I'll, I'll buy a few things, right? But you'd spend like twenty bucks, get the cards you're missing, borrow the rest, mm -hmm. right? And in theory, that deck was good for three, four weeks, right? Yep. Or it could get you through like a third of the standard season. Um, now like decks on arena, we've talked about like. You know, when we used to track the metagame, the metagame would change from, like, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Oh, for sure. It might go through multiple right? changes. Right, where you would see, like, oh, man, like, I need to change my removal in my sideboard because I'm not running in this deck anymore. Yep. Oh, it's right? 2 o'clock. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, Arena needs to allow you to be more nimble with your deck. Mm -hmm. And they are, like, no, like... Well, mono. Well, they'll buy a two hundred dollar mono white deck, and it'll be good for three months. And it's like, awesome. I'm not willing to spend eight hundred dollars on arena. Yeah. When if I bought that like two hundred dollars standard deck, I could flip out of it for a hundred and twenty bucks. So like now I spent eighty dollars on three months yeah. of magic, as opposed to two hundred. So, like, they're losing the fact that, like, with a physical card, there is some value beyond its value as a game piece, mm -hmm. right? And they're just selling you game pieces that have no value. Yeah. It's kind of... I was thinking about, like, like microtransactions, right? This is just, like... Oh, yeah. I mean, know, that's a really good parallel. Every... It's every, like, modern game has microtransactions. Yeah. Right, and everyone universally hates microtransactions. Right, and um, Magic probably more than almost any other game I can think of is on some level pay to win. Mm -hmm. Right, if you're um, right, if you add twelve rares to your deck, your win percentage might go up ten percent. Right? That is the clearest pay to win you can have, right? Yeah. Right? Your win rate doesn't go to 100, but maybe it goes from 45 to 55. Mm -hmm. Right? That'd be too maybe it goes from 40 to 50, right? That's a big difference. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's like a pay to win kind of thing. And like they've made the grind so. Bleh. Yeah. Right? The grind is. And you. I don't think you can literally play enough magic 
to get enough packs to get the whole set, like, as a free-to-play player? Probably not. And, right, like, just, this might be subject to change also, because they did talk about something else I think we're going to mention a little bit later in the show, unless you wanted to talk about it now. Whatever you want to say. The um, I don't, I don't... the constructed events. Oh, yeah. They're changing the price payout on them to make it more mm -hmm. in line with the drafters. One of the things they said in the stream was that, you know, they're giving out these packs to limited players as price support, and, like, limited players don't care about the packs. They just want to play limited. So mm -hmm. they're the people that really need those packs are the constructed players. So the constructed events, you know, like the thousand gold or what, I, I'm sure they're going to change the price, but the like six or the seven win, two loss events or the is it five win, three loss, best of three events or whatever they are, um, just the ones you can enter on demand. They're doing away with the ICRs and they're going to move to booster packs. It's going to be gold and booster packs for the payout. Yeah, which is you know, you could, they, they could just make them wild cards. I mean, they could. They could just pay you out in wild cards. That's true. Um, Except that they but again, have like, to what, take that wild card out somewhere. Yes, like, what would the price point have to be for them to, like, feel like that is, like... like but, like... If they paid out in wild cards, like, say, you know, you hit five wins and you get a rare wild card, okay? They would have to take that entire rare wild card out somewhere. Like, it's kind of a one-for-one -one thing. When Maybe, you, but if they pack, if they gave you six if they gave you six if they gave you six packs, they've given you one rare wild card. That's kind of my point, though. Is they can they can feather like there's six increments in between nothing and that wild card if you pay out yeah. packs. Whereas if you were to give that out as a prize, you can't give out half a half a wild card or a quarter of a yeah. wild card. But my thought is is like right now. I don't think anyone really is in those events too often, right? Right. If you if you took their if you took the participation from like two percent to ten percent, how big of a rake is that for you? Yeah, I mean, if they start right? paying out on wild cards, so everybody goes to play them. Yeah, which like now you're just like now people are giving you money they could have given you for a a wild card, right, or six packs, and they might not get anything. Well, I mean, some portion of them are going to get nothing. But, yeah. like, the more people you have entering those events, the more wild cards you're giving out, though. Fair. Um, so, like I said, I think the wild card pack is what, like, uh, made made the Twitter and Reddit uh, discourse uh, crazy. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, and, like, they started the stream off with it, too, which I'm sure just jaded everybody's view of the rest of yeah, the stream. Yeah, the, the rest of the way. Yeah. Because, like, Amy the Amazonian was like, I couldn't hear, did they say four ninety nine? And someone's like, no, forty nine ninety nine, And she was like, what? Yeah. Like, that's, yeah. So, like, I think that was just, like, universal. Mm -hmm. Um, And this IRC, this pact instead of IRC is going to happen April, May-ish timeline. So I'm like, guessing, like, uh, when Streets of New Capenna come out. Yeah, I think they said it was going to be around streets. Yeah. Um, also, this is another thing that I had on the notes for later in the show, but we don't have to go into it super deep, so I'm going to mention it now. Um, it's probably also going to coincide with when Huey does his OP stream. Yes. Um, they announced that they're going to have Huey on to talk about whatever the new face of organized play is going to look like. And I, on the On the 31st. Is that when it is? Um, they also mentioned that these constructed events are going to play into that somehow. Mm -hmm. So, we'll, yeah, we'll like see what I that could, brings. I could definitely see, like, you know, some sort of, like, oh, if you, like, 7 an event, mm -hmm. it qualifies you for another event or something. Yeah. In, like, um, like, this is kind of a whole different issue. I don't know if you want to talk about it today or not, but like, I think part of the problem with Arena and why everybody's so bitter is the ladder. Like, the ladder just makes the game miserable to play. You're so True. concerned with your rank and how quick you can get your wins and what your win rate is. And, like, that's not what Magic's about. That's not what Magic has ever been about. Magic has always been about the tournament. 
not your progress over six months, you know, tracking every single game. Um, mm -hmm. So I think like a focus from the point of OP on these challenges to bring it more in line with what paper magic is and to bring it more in line with what like even magic online is, I think is a good move. Yeah. Um, agreed. Like, and like, uh, I had an article that was on uh, channel fireball talked about like arena's currency is really time. Mm -hmm. Like how much time you spend playing. Oh, for sure. And like the time you spend on the ladder is not rewarded. No. Right. Like I hit mythic and it's like, cool. You get three more packs. Yeah, It's a, it's a joke. And it's like, it's like, okay, like why did I spend all this time? Like, yeah. Like, realistically, I'm not going to be in the top 100 Mythic players. Right. Right? Just due to time. Right? And so, like, I hit Mythic and it doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. Right? So, like, why why bother? Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, they did bring up that maybe you can grind Sparky with cards you don't own. Yeah, just as a way to test decks. Um, they're yeah, to, like, Goldfish. Yeah, they... they... They said they've talked about it. They haven't made any decisions yet, and they don't know what the best route is going to be. Um, they mentioned not just Sparky, but maybe against friends as well. Yeah, like in a direct that would, challenge that kind would of thing. Be a a boon for people that are testing for like events on Arena. Absolutely. Right, instead of having to like dump all the money in to get your one uh, a deck to test with, and then go like, well, that was bad. And then have to like try something else to just be able to test would be good. I mean, it, it, um, if they do it through direct challenge, that also kind of opens up a whole new like weird thing for like privately run tournaments. Yes, because then you would like you would effectively everyone would have god accounts. Yeah. So that could be an issue that they you know don't, that's not a box they want to open. I'm sure Chad so I could has just, uh, thought about that though. Bro, don't let those nerds get my beans. Yeah, put them back in the box, bro. Yeah, bro, those beans go over there. <laughs> in Chad's office, bro. All right, so now we want to talk digital versus paper. Yeah, they made, and, they made some statements on the stream that are kind of, like, contradictory. Um, okay. So I thought we'd just kind of talk about it in general because some of the things that a lot of people have problems with kind of fall into these categories. At least from, mm -hmm. like, the criticisms I've seen around, like, social media or whatever. Um, in some aspects, Wizard want, or Wizards of the Coast wants Arena to mimic uh, paper. They want it yes. to be the same game. But in other aspects, they want it to be completely different. Um, they talked about the, like, opening packs. Like, for some reason, Wizards thinks it's fun to open digital packs. It is not. I will, no. I will open 110 packs, and it's just, like, a chore. Yeah. There's... Just, like, open to... And God help me if I get to, like, eight packs. And I'm just like, <laughs> nope. And you gotta I'm going to wait till I win two other packs somewhere else so I can just hit open ten. Yeah. There's, like, there's 108 packs, I think. That happens like when you're opening packs. Like you know when you're gonna get your wild cards. Most of the time it doesn't matter what you open because you're not gonna open what you're looking for anyway. You're just trying to get the next wild card. Like there's no there's no foils to open, there's nothing special, the contents of the pack never change. Um every card is worth the same amount. Yeah. It, it, right, exactly. That's the big like the thing with opening packs and paper is Yes, you might open like seven bulk rares, but on the eighth pack, you open the Meat Hook Massacre and it's $40. Yeah. And you're like, oh my gosh, I just paid for all the packs I got before. Yeah. But now a Meat Hook Massacre and the bulk unplayable Red Enchantment Mythic. Yeah. Right? The are worth the, the exact amount. same. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So there's nothing to get excited about. It's just like, well, let me see. Like, I don't even really pay attention to what I open. Yeah. It's just like, open 10, open 10, open 10, try to get through it, and then go like, okay, now what am I missing What the, for the deck I want to make or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, they've there's a fundamental misunderstanding about what people want to do on Arena, mm -hmm. I think is the problem. 
I mean, it and it's not be. open packs. And I mean, part of it also might be like they have way more data than you or I have access to as far as what happens on Arena. Sure. I'm, you know, there's millions of players on Arena. I'm sure there are a large number that you know view the game through the same eyes as you or I do, but you know, maybe there's a bunch that you know don't have huge collections, only have like starter decks, and they like clicking the button 10 times instead of clicking the 10x button yeah i mean but i don't know how you can say like oh this person's enjoying opening these packs like yeah can they measure how much time between you click the pack <laughs> where we're like oh man uh he just was spamming the open 10 button he didn't look at any of these but this person like, way more people click open one and then look at each card. It takes them 30 seconds before they click open the next pack. They can see you so hovering that, over each card. Yeah, like, oh, they savored this one. Yeah. And it's, so it's like, I don't know where, what data they can have that's like, do you enjoy opening digital packs? Well, I mean, maybe um, it's people that buy packs versus people that don't buy packs. Like, I don't buy packs. I don't buy single packs. I don't buy bundles of packs. If no, I never. Like, need wild cards or something, I sink enough gold or gems to do a draft, and then the, that's how I open my packs. Yeah. So maybe maybe they're looking at people that like don't draft and just open packs. Yeah. Um. So they. So like you said, they they're trying to say, hey, we we were mimicking paper, and then they do other stuff that that doesn't. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing that everyone's upset about was the lack of dusting. Now, this is Ryan Spain's fault. No dusting is Ryan Spain's fault. Is it was one of the very first things they instituted mm -hmm. because they he said they didn't want and he this is after he quit Wizard, so he didn't have to like not company speak. Right. Uh, and this was like two years ago or a year and a half ago. He's like, we didn't want you to have to destroy your cards. Mm -hmm. We wanted you to be able to keep your cards. So we got rid. We didn't put dusting in, mm -hmm. right? So this was a decision made early on. Yeah, I think the problem is that that mindset is fine when all your cards are legal, but as soon as rotation starts happening, right? You have these collections that have like. Dra that are just full of draft rares slash like bulk rares mm -hmm. that aren't gonna see play. Oh, you never know. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, cool. So like maybe you do print something that makes stupid draft chaff rare valuable, but then I'll just dust the other draft chaff rares I have from other sets and play that card. Yeah. So they've like so their idea, they're like, oh, well, we don't want to dust because we don't need to destroy stuff. And it's like, well, I would, in paper, destroy four rares by handing them to my LGS owner right. for, like, 65 70% value mm -hmm. to get the rares I wanted for my next deck. Yeah. Or deck for a different format or whatever. Yeah. And they just don't give you that. Right. They're just like, nope. Nope, 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 nope. So um, what they had said on the stream, and the, like I never really thought about it this way. I don't know if you did or not, um, but they said they front load the dust where the wild card track is their like solution to dusting, where instead of you having to burn your cards to get the dust, they give you, you know, was it a sixth of a card up front? Mm -hmm. So I feel I had not thought of it that way. I kind of feel like that is a uh, a a solution they backed into. Yeah, as but does it matter to... that they backed into it or that they no. like, designed it in? Like it, it's something that's there, and it yeah. was a knob they decided to turn. My my uh, thought was that um, well, if this is the like why is I understand that we get to keep our trash rares that we don't want, mm -hmm. right? But, like, they could have made it more generous. Right? Well, sure, it could have been... They'd have to take it out of somewhere else. Exactly. But, like, from the beginning, it could have been... Every time you open four packs, you get a rare. As opposed to every six. Yeah. And I understand, yeah, well, you get to keep your card, so it should be less generous. It's like, yes, but my collection is full of cards I don't want. Yeah. 
So, uh, no, it's it's an interesting way to think about it. Yeah, I, I hadn't um, thought about it that way, so I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I'm in the minority, but that's not... No, I, no, I think that it is fine, but I think it is the... I think it's, oh, people want us to dust. To, in, to in, institute dusting. Mm-hmm. We don't want to institu- institute dusting. How can we tell them they shouldn't want dusting? Oh, we can tell them that they already have dusting. <laughs> we dust up front. Yeah. And we take that decision paralysis off of you. And it's like, no, no, I, I know that the garbage red rare enchantment is not good. Right. So I can turn that into a sixth of a card that I have decided is good. The bad seven but, mana but won't, red mythic enchantment. Yeah, but won't won't you feel bad if that card actually ends up being good? Maybe, but I would have got to play the deck I wanted to play. Yeah. So, um, like, I, I did think of one more thing on why dusting may not make sense for the game that Wizards is trying to play here. And it kind of goes into, like, the next thing we're going to talk about. So I figured this is okay. like an, an all right interlude um what about like rebalanced or digital only cards like they shake up the meta a lot more and they change the meta so like if you look at a lot of the cards um or go back and look at the like big event that happened where like venture was you know the deck that took down the tournament those cards I would were, apologize those cards were all awful right Mm -hmm. and then they you know made them all better so how like their whole point behind not dusting is the feel bads right being somebody that has you know a finite resources to sink into arena say you were playing in afr and you really like the venture mechanic and you built the venture deck before everybody told you it was awful and you got absolutely pummeled and you dusted the entire deck to build dragons or whatever. Mm-hmm. Along comes alchemy and, you know, brings all those cards back up to a power level where they can compete and venture takes down, you know, a big professional level tournament. Like how bad do you feel at that point that you turned an entire deck's worth of cards into five cards, six cards? Error. I think that the, the the problem with the game they're playing is on... So yes, that does avoid that feel bad. Um, I, I would contend if they had tested standard sure. at all for the last two years, we wouldn't have this problem. It's a whole different conversation, though. Uh, but, so you're, you're throwing... Um, you're throwing 30 alchemy, basically rares into the format every three months. Right, but like right? The, the new cards aren't the rebalances. This is fair, but but like so how do you get those cards? Well, I mean you, you gotta buy them. Yeah, I, I can't I can't draft to get them. Right. Right? Uh I I can't uh Pre fill all my com- I can't pre get all my commons and uncommons like Blake told me to do, so I get slightly infinitesimally more vault progress. Right, right. Like, so they're like, "Hey, here's all these ways to like play for free, and like we're not ca- charging that much." But after you drafted to get the cards, now for the format that we really want you to play, you've got to buy all these cards every couple months. Yeah, and you can't dust anything. Because what if we print a card that then you buy because it makes some other cards you have good, you wouldn't want to dust that. But then if it's too good, we're going to rebalance it again and make it not work the way it did when you kept your card. Like, they're like, because they brought up like, oh, well, we, we, uh, uh, you know, rebalanced some cards that actually still showed up in the uh, alchemy tournament. So they must have been like, fine. It's like, okay, so like Inquisitor Captain. You built this entire deck around like yeah. blinking Inquisitor Captain. Then they make it so it doesn't work when it blinks. So all those cards are now garbage to you. Right. Oh, but Inquisitor Captain can still get played in this other deck, so it's fine. 
It's like, no, no. No, like, that's a feel bad for the person who got, like, Soul Herders and the stupid three mana, like, rare clone mm -hmm. and, like, all the blue white lands. And then was like, oh, I guess I can't play this. Or, like, they're, ephem they're, they're rare ephemerates. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. Yeah. I I guess I can't one. Yeah, my 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 deck doesn't work anymore. So like this system is full of feel bads. Mm -hmm. It it would I think it would feel less bad if like you were given a choice. I think that's what a lot of people just want like give me a choice. Yeah. Right, don't lock me in, right? And then like Wizards has all the power to be like, "Oh, yeah, you know what? Um like they have the power to ban your card, so like, yeah, like we're gonna get rid of Epiphany. Oh, okay, there went my deck. Oh, I'll just play it. In, it's kind of fixed in Alchemy, so I guess I'll play it in Alchemy, and then they like make some other change, and you're just like, oh, well, I guess, I guess never mind. Yeah. So like, I don't know. Like the we want to avoid feel bad sounds good, but I don't know how much what they're doing avoids feel bads. I understand what you're saying. Um. In the world that they're trying to build, though, I think there's a lot more potential for feel bads than there was before, though. There is. And it, th that was just, you know, the point I was trying yeah. to make was that in this so, you know, world of digitally changing cards, it's it's kind of weird. Yeah. So the 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 comment that you made, like the world they're trying to build, and this is something I was thinking of, and then Arena Decklist kind of articulated a little bit better. Right. Uh, I forget the name of the theory. But, like, when your users are using your product, mm -hmm. right, and they say, I'm using this product this way, you don't look at them and say, well, that's not how I want you to use our product. Use it <laughs> You're this doing way. it wrong, yeah. Yeah. Like, I heard a neat story. Did you know what Play-Doh started out as? Nope. Play-Doh was wallpaper cleaner to remove soot hmm. from wallpaper. And the business was going under because, well, there was less soot on wallpaper in the 40s and 50s. Yeah. And apparently the guy who owned the company his, had a friend that was a teacher. And she was like, oh, yeah, like, we use this stuff in class as, like, a toy for kids. It's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. And so he didn't go like, no, only use it to clean wallpaper. He was like, <laughs> oh, interesting. So we use it to make little, to play with little kids. Like, put some but colors in that. Yeah, cool. I have a multi-million dollar business now. Great. Owned by Hasbro, right? I think. Yes, owned by Hasbro. <laughs> right. But I feel like... Like, I was just saying that it, it feels like... Um, um, what's it called? Um, Wizards keeps... Doesn't understand how people want to interact with their product. And keeps saying, well, our vision for Arena is this. And it's like, cool... But, like, that's not how many, that's not how everyone plays Magic, mm -hmm. right? They're 100%. Wait, we all knew people at the LGS that, like, bought, like, whatever, like, event deck, mm -hmm. right? And slow, and, like, bought packs and traded and slowly added to that event deck, mm -hmm. right? Cool. But then there are way more people like that bought two boxes, bought singles, and then built decks. And if a deck won a tournament, they got that deck. And There's Arena way more makes people that... that you and I saw though, because we lived in that world. That's my point. But my point is is like to to say that to basically they're trying to make Arena one size fit all. Mm -hmm. Right? I think that making it so the person who wants to come in and buy a deck, play it for three weeks, and then buy another deck and not be out six hundred dollars, yeah. right? I think that person, if you make it so they're not getting fleeced, doesn't in turn change the behavior of the person who gets the like red intro deck and just jams the red intro deck until their eyes bleed. And, like, is super hype when they open, like, a Red Mythic. Yeah. That they throw in their deck that has no rhyme or reason or reason to be in there. Mm -hmm. But it's a Red Mythic. Right. 
So, like, there's this whole chunk of Wizards player base that's like, hey, we want to do your thing this way. We want to use your game this way. And Wizards going, no, we don't want you to use it that way. Yeah. And it's like, listen to your customers. And I know that, like, the people, but even the people that weren't super competitive, right? Like, would, like, you know, buy a deck. Right, but, like, even the people that weren't super competitive, you saw at the store for FNM. Yes. There, and there's a lot of people that come into the store that never come for FNM. Fair. But of this, how many of these people are finding their way to Arena? Well, I, I mean, I have no idea. Right. So like, I, like I, realistically, you don't have any idea either, though. Like, I don't either. Uh, but what I'm saying is, is if you if you made it so that people could get into decks, like you're not adversely hurting those players that um aren't interacting with the game the way you or I do. Mm -hmm. But if you make that more appealing, maybe they interact with the game more like you and I do. And maybe it's not that they buy the most high-powered deck, but they f see something neat and they're able to put it together. Yeah. Right? Because right now, like, look at my cool deck. It's like, yeah, I can never play that. Right? Like, I can never get the those cards together. Yeah. So, like, I understand that, like, we're biased by what we saw. Mm -hmm. And, like, again, there's the, like, giant un unseen group that apparently runs all of magic well i mean look at your stats though like we've talked about this on the show before when you get your your stats for mm -hmm. each set you like you've played more games than 98 percent of players on arena yeah and like how many hours a day do you play arena uh maybe like maybe on average an hour right so playing one hour a day so seven hours a week you play more games of arena than 98% of players on arena. Mm -hmm. So 98% of the players on arena do not engage with the game the same way you or I do. Fair. I don't know. It's, I understand where like, again, they have more data, but it feels like they're trying to hold arena in this certain view. I think in the notes, I put it, uh, as Richard Garfield intended, mm -hmm. which is like, I bought seven packs. I will make my deck out of whatever seven random packs worth of stuff I opened. Yeah. Oh, three weeks later, I bought my eighth pack. I will improve my deck slightly. Yeah. And like, I don't feel like that is how magic is interacted with anymore. Mm -hmm. Maybe. At least, at least not. Again, we might. It might be the 10 or 20% of players aren't interacting with the game that way. Right? And it might be that we see that, that that's the 10 or 20% that I see, right? That we, that we yeah. see. Right? But I don't feel like you, that you need to be like, no, no. We don't want you to interact with the game that way. It's like, no, this is how they want to use your product. Let Help them use, them use your product. To. Help them use that product in this way. Right? Because maybe only 5% of those people are actually like plunking down a ton of money. Yeah, I, I mean, I have no idea. Right? And that was the other thing. Is like, if they make changes, like, any change they make has to like break even or grow. Mm -hmm. Right? So you either have to like keep the same number of people spending money, but they spend more. Right. Or let the people that are spending at the very top end spend less, but get more people to spend money, mm -hmm. right? Get people from zero dollars to five dollars, and people from five to ten. Yep. Right. But then that lets the person that wants to have a bunch of cards, instead of them having to spend three hundred, they spend two hundred. Right. But then you still end up ahead because you took all the zeros and turned them into fives. And turned all the fives into tens. So, like, it's a growth thing. And a, another thing we don't talk about is, like, I don't, like, my, like, my brother, uh, 
I was like, oh, you're playing Magic? I was like, yeah. And I was just like, don't. It's too expensive. Like, I don't know if you would enjoy... But maybe you would have. Maybe you would have just, like, played a deck and been in, like, the, like, weird, like, limbo of not a real queue for his first, like, 45 matches or whatever. Yeah. And, like, had fun. But it just seems like, like, oh, hey, look at this cool deck. Oh, yeah, I can't play that. Right, and I, and I don't feel like that was a thing that, like, it's like, hey, I saw this really cool deck. Someone would figure out how to get it for you in the store, usually, right? Mm-hmm. Right, like you know, Arena doesn't have that. You know, yeah. Buy singles with oh, I want to. I want to brew this. Oh, this deck looks really fun. I want to put it together. No, you can't. Yeah. Unless you have two hundred dollars. Right. I don't know if it's good. Well, you can play against Sparky, which is better than just yoloing it. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. It's just frustrating to be told. Well, this isn't how we see the client working. Yeah. And it's like, why? It's like, don't play our video game the way you enjoy. Play Please the play the video game play. another way. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's that's hard. Yeah. And I think that's another thing is I think a lot of people the thing I took away from it is like the way Wizard sees how, Arena and how Arena works is very different than the way I see Arena mm-hmm. and the way I want Arena to work for me. Right. And so I mean, we've heard that criticism from the get go, though. Yeah, but I think like to just hear like, oh no, that's not how we envision the client working. Like we see someone like playing a red deck and then making it a red white deck, and we know it's really hard if you go from playing Boros to Simic. Like that's where like there's an issue, and it's like, okay, but how many people do you lose that were playing the Boros deck and then they want to play the Simic deck and they just can't? Mm-hmm. Or, like, they were winning 52% of their games and feeling good. And then the Boros deck became awful for whatever reason. Because you changed a card. <laughs> yeah, you changed a card. Or, like, or like the Simic deck got really good. And like, oh, I want to play that Simic deck. And it's like, yeah, no, you can't ever get there. Mm-hmm. You, you started with the red starter deck. Right. You are now a red mage until you've played enough to get, like... A hundred packs. Yeah. And God help you if you needed a green card from Zendikar. <laughs> because now you got to get a hundred packs of Zendikar. Yeah. So, like, that was something I was thinking of. It's not in the show notes or anything. But I think that's a knob that they might be able to turn in the future. Is, like, the old sets that aren't standard legal. Like, maybe you don't let them count towards your wild card progression. But, like, sell the packs at a discount. Like, how many people are buying Guilds of Ravnica packs? They're on the client. Yeah. I mean, that would be a huge departure from where we started of two wild cards for every historic rare. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> now, 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 now we're doing it at a discount? Like, But, like, we just, like, we keep pricing people out of the client, mm-hmm. right? And so at some point, like, I feel like you need to be growing the client and working on ways to bring people in. Yeah. And, like, one of the things that got brought up was, like, yo, why don't you put, like, arena codes in packs? Pokemon does it. Yeah. And they're like, no. And I think that Jerry mentioned that they were like, we want everything in a pack to, like, be relevant to, like, a paper player. So I don't think that's exactly what they said. Um, That might have been how... Jerry took it, but I don't think that's exactly what they said. Okay. Um, What I remember them saying is that the number of paper packs greatly outweigh, or the number of paper packs sold greatly outweighs the number of digital packs that are opened. So if you were to put an arena code in every pack, like not all of those players are arena players maybe you would conquer some and get some people to play arena and that like that's a kind of a different thing from where i'm going but it, say you have i don't know we'll, we'll uh we'll lowball it and we'll call it three times you sell three times the amount of paper packs as you do digital packs every one of those paper packs has a code for a digital pack in it mm-hmm. all of those players aren't going to redeem their packs they're not so all of a sudden, all of those codes have a monetary value. 
Uh huh. So you go on eBay. I would uh -huh. like arena pack codes, please. And you see uh -huh. lots of 10 for sale for $4 or whatever the going rate ends up being. Um, what you just did is you devalued the price of a pack in your client for like really no good reason. Like you said, Pokemon does this. How much I, I can see you like Google searching right now. How much are 16 cents, 16 cents. So if you could buy arena packs for 16 cents, would you ever buy gold on arena or buy gems on arena again? No, but I haven't bought gems in like a year. If you were somebody that bought gems on arena. I mean, you'd save up your like gold you, to do your drafts like you like you do right now. You I there's there's a number that is not every pack. Mm -hmm. Right? What if it's like one in six packs got an arena code? Yeah. Or maybe one in 12 packs, packs, maybe just maybe just set boosters and maybe it's like three slots on the list. Where yeah, whatever. Like, like two or three a box or whatever. Yeah. There's not like a ton, but like it's conversion. Mm -hmm. It hopefully would convert people. Yeah. And, you know, would be something nice for your player base. Mm -hmm. God forbid. Yeah. Um But I don't know I don't know if that is the right answer. But I think that what people are just like we are your enfranchised player base. Mm -hmm. We feel like... I think we feel like we're being taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. We look at other digital games that are significantly more generous than you are. And we... I feel like it comes down to, like, people are saying, like, hey, can you be in line with Hearthstone? With this new Yu-Gi-Oh! game? Mm -hmm. Um eternal like can you be in line with those games in terms of like how much money i have to put in to play a like you know a competitive or semi-competitive deck like it's not like wizards is like blazing a trail here like wizards is late to the game mm -hmm. and there was already a model established and wizards went no we're gonna do it this way and everyone's been like, well, maybe they'll come to their senses and do it the way the rest of the like in, uh, industry does it. And Wizards hasn't changed, and new players are coming into the f into the market, and they're doing it industry standard. Yeah. So like Wizards is off on an island doing it different than everyone else, and. They are probably making way more money than everyone else. Mm -hmm. And maybe everyone's doing it wrong. Right? Yeah. But it feels like if six other major corporations are doing it this way, and you're off over here doing your own thing, like, who's probably wrong? Well, I mean, again, I told you at the top of this episode I was going to play a little devil's advocate here. Um if you're making money hand over fist doing things the way you're doing them and you're not losing people to other clients, like, I mean, you're still signing into arena every day. I'm still signing into arena every day. All these I, I am not signing in every day. Well, <laughs> yeah. all, all these people that are complaining on social media are still signing into arena every day. Like, Oh no, I agree. I agree that there is that on one hand, we're all, no, not we're all like we're, people are saying, Oh no, the client is not as generous as everyone else, mm -hmm. but yet are going on and playing for four hours. Right. Right. Like, I totally understand the disconnect of, I don't like this, must log in. Yeah. Got to right. get my wins. I need my four wins. I got to do my challenge. Right. So, like, I 100% agree that, like, there is some cognitive dissonance of, of this. Mm -hmm. So, like... From my point of view, the way I interact with Arena, like, I don't have a problem with the economy. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, it, it works, works fine, fine for me. For me. Yeah. Like but you said, I, I haven't put gems into Arena in 12, 14 months, probably. 
Yeah, but I understand that a lot of people, it doesn't work for them. Oh, yeah. Especially and people that are, like, just getting in now and want to play, you know, a non-rotating format. Like, good yeah. luck. I'm sorry. You should have yeah, signed like, up two years ago. Like, yeah. And, like, I think that that is a long-term problem. Yeah. For, for Wizards that they have to address mm -hmm. because... You know, I mean, even with the, like, oh, hey, we're going to, we move OP onto Arena. Mm. How does someone get the cards? Well, I mean, I don't know if they're moving OP onto Arena or, like, I, until we see Huey's stream, I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, like there is this huge barrier to entry to Arena. Yeah. Right? The, the, the free-to-play model is fine. Right. But like, I feel like there's a sandbox for free to play. And then there's a different entire game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you definitely don't have the same people that are like actively trying to be free to play. Like, I think you and I are kind of in the same boat where we're like mostly free to play, but only through, you know, being decent at the game and spending a whole bunch of time at it. Um, yeah. It's, it's time and some skill. Yeah, the pe and like we don't mind throwing a couple bucks in for gems if we need to either. Like the people that are actually trying to be free to play, I think are in a little bit different sandbox than even you or I. And like I said, I yeah. ha I haven't put gems into arena in at least a year. Yeah, I've we are three almost three months through. I made a uh, spread a Google Doc that was arena spending. Yeah, because we always talk about our arena spending, then we never know what it is. Right. And neither of us has put anything in for this year. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get through Kamigawa and probably the next set for sure and not have to put any money in. Yeah, I will definitely get through Kamigawa. Um, I'm, I'm not sure about the next set. I might need to put some in for next set, but we'll see where I end up. Yeah, like I have, I still have like a hundred and, oh no, what is it, like, whatever, it's like 14,000 gems or something or 12,000 gems. Like I'm still like fine. Yeah, I think I've got five or six drafts worth of gems left. Yeah. So, all right, moving on a little bit. Yeah. The the meme to come out of this, and <laughs> and we're a little bit long for what what our uh, goal for an hour podcast, but that's all right. Uh, the meme to come out of this was technology. <sighs> we don't have the technology. Yeah. So there are some things coming that are technological marvels. Well, one it, of which <laughs> it's is not that to it's be a marvel, able to but. To be able to set your favorite land. Yeah. So it will just default to those as opposed to you scrolling through however many 600 basic lands. Mm -hmm. um, so we had brought up that, um, and then this is also going to help address the issue with multiple printings. Yeah. Where you have a page that is a bunch of duresses. Yeah. And this uh, leads into something we've talked about before where, like, there was a problem where, like, the Dracula lands, like, one of them was bugged and broke the game. Mm -hmm. And that kind of revealed that each type of, each art of land is a different digital object. Right. Every single as opposed, card in your collection is a different digital object. As opposed to being, like, mountain with a skin. Mm -hmm. It's Mountain Dracula, Mountain Zendikar 1, Mountain Zendikar 2. Right. Right, they're all different things. Yep. As opposed to being mountain, skin, skin, skin. Yeah. So they all play differently. So I think the client's handling them all differently, which is why it's made it hard for them to let you pick your basic land. Or deal with multiple printings of the same card. Now, with something like duress, it's not a huge deal. You're out, you know, some comments or whatever, and even though you've got to scroll through two pages of duresses to find whichever art you feel like playing with, like, ultimately, in the long run, nobody really cares that you're opening more duresses and, you know, whatever set's coming up next. The problem is, like, the rare land cycles that they tend to reprint, like Fabled Passage or the Scry Lands, where they've been in multiple sets on Arena with like the same exact art so you're basically losing a rare to 
like a duplicate card that you will never ever play. And like they did move them to the end. Right. But they still exist. But they still existed. As opposed to just letting you say like, yeah, no, don't give me this card. Yeah. Um so I, I put here is is Arena the TCG Cyberpunk. <laughs> And what I mean by this is there's been, in the last year and a half, uh, probably because of COVID, we can blame COVID for everything usually, mm -hmm. uh, right? There's been a lot of games that have come out half-finished. Right. Cyberpunk. Um, Battlefield, was it 2042? Mm -hmm. The new Battlefield is like a disaster, right? And like Arena made... Too, right? Wasn't there a pirate game that was supposed to be awesome, <sighs> but like flop? Like on Stranger Seas, maybe? I don't remember. Um, but like, there's a bunch of games that have come out half done mm -hmm. that is like, and it's like a combination of like, you know, pressure from like players, mm -hmm. right? I mean, the cyberpunk devs were getting death threats right. for not releasing cyberpunk. Calm down, nerds. <laughs> um, and like, I'm sure that like the arena shareholders were like, I want, you know, and the muckety mucks were like, yo, I want like some of this hearthstone cash. Chad wanted his beans. Bro. Bro, their game's trash, bro. They don't have instance, bro. <laughs> bro, we get so many more beans than those nerds. Yeah. Right? Uh, bro, they have champions. <laughs> Companions, bro. Companions. Oh, man. That's where it came from. Um, maybe. But you... But so, like, maybe, like, with the lack of technology and some of the things that have not been worked out, Right? Maybe the game just needed like six more months in the oven. I don't know that six more months in the oven would have fixed anything. I think but, like, we I had think... like a year in alpha. And then I think we, we had... had another year in beta. At least a year in beta. But like, I think that like, maybe not releasing, like pushing the alpha back. And like, because it feels like there's a lot of, they like put it together. And then there was someone was like, what about rotation? Oh, dude. Yeah, crap, what about rotation? Yeah. What happens when we print, like, duress for the fourth time? Oh, God, I don't know. Crap. Uh, uh, like, stuff that, like, I don't know if the people who made it weren't super familiar with, like, how metric sets work. Mm -hmm. And then they, like, turned out a product, and then it was like, oh, there's all these things. And, like, if it wasn't so expensive on the front end... Right, like you could forgive some of the back end stuff. You, you could forget, like, if, if, like, you could get like a reasonable standard deck for fifty bucks. Yeah. Right. Right. Or like get an entire set for fifty bucks, and if when rotation happened, those cards went away, you'd probably forgive it. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I got like a year, two years use out of those cards. Right. For 50 bucks. Okay, that's fine. Like, I'm cool with that. Mm -hmm. Right? But it's like, oh, I spent $250. I've got to keep retain access to those cards. Yeah. Like, they need to stay good. Right? And, you know, going back to dusting, then they just stare at you. <laughs> you can't make them go away, right? Yeah. Like, you're just like, oh my god, like, I... I'm just stuck with this card I'm never going to use. And so now they're having to build, like, extra formats. A seventh copy of Fable Passage. Yeah. But, like, I don't know if, like, some of these technology issues... I think some are 100% real. Mm -hmm. I think some might be, like... Yeah, uh... uh we're going to say technology. Well, I mean, I can see how this is definitely an issue. Like, in order to fix this, like, the way the game sees game objects, like, I mean, you've got to rebuild the game. That's not, yeah, it's this not is just like a, this is a fundamental problem. It's not something This is something can, that, like, um, fix. This is something from, that Richard from MTG Goldfish was talking about. Like, Seth, I forget exactly what it was about. Like, asked him about, like, well, what if you, he's like, I don't know anything about coding. Richard, you do. What? would this take? And he was like, probably six months to a year with like adding nothing and just rebuilding it from the ground up yeah. to fix some whatever issue. Like, it's that broken. I think it was like the it might have been like the Dracula lands. Yeah, yeah I think like, I remember thing like, about that. Oh, like, 
if this is how they do stuff, like, this is bad. Yeah. Right? So, and someone pointed out, like, whenever they hear we don't have the technology, they're like, that just leads me to believe there are four devs that are worked to death that can barely keep this thing up and running. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, the four unpaid interns are just really hoping. Yeah. Like, every day when they, like, every day when they come in, they're like, please let the server have a green light. <laughs> please let it have a green light. Oh, thank God. Yeah. In the day it has a red light, they're just like, I don't know what to do. Call in sick. <laughs> yeah, but no, I just, I just feel like, like, it may have been rushed. Maybe. Like, not due to COVID, but, like, they saw the dollars mm -hmm. starting to roll in, and they're like, oh, man, if we just take this thing live, we're going to make a ton. Well, I mean, I'm sure the players were pushing for it, too. I know. Oh, no. Like, not without, players are not without fault. Yeah. But, like, it just, I don't know. It just seems like a lot of the stuff could have been fixed. Mm -hmm. So, what do we have here? Uh, are we going to get wild cards when uh, cards are rebalanced? Um, no, but they did say that they're talking about um, having cards revert to as printed when they rotate out of alchemy. So, like, for historic. So, mm -hmm. And I know they said that they thought it would be too difficult to have like both versions available maybe mm -hmm. because it's too much of like a cognitive load to know like am i playing against the luminarch aspirant that puts a counter on before co at combat yeah. or at the end step so i understand that um but it's like weird to be like yeah we nerfed your card for a year but then we're gonna unnerf it so it'll be fine well I guess it depends, like, what their... I know we just talked about what their vision of the game is, but, like, what their vision of the game is. Like, if they're seeing alchemy as its own, like, digital-only thing where, you know, things are changing all of the time and, like, the rest of the format is not like that or the rest of, you know, arena is not like that, then this kind of makes sense. Like, if, if alchemy is kind of, like, sectioned off as its own thing and... Like, that's where all the weird cards are. Well, they did make a pseudo-announcement where they were like, yeah, we are going to make another yeah. non-rotating format that does not have alchemy cards in it. Right. Like, we want alchemy to be the fast, rebalanced, super cool format that people don't get bored of. That they have to spend two hundred dollars to get all of the alchemy cards. Yeah, on top of and the then set on top of the set release, yeah. and then we want historic to be its own cool digital magic format, and then we'll have this other thing, right? To like keep all you old people happy. That's tied more to like paper, uh, tabletop. Yeah, and it's like you had that. It was called historic. <laughs> then you were like. Oh, people are playing the same deck for more than two weeks at a time. We got to just randomly dump cards in it mm -hmm. to try to make it like uh, turn over more so that they have to spend more money. Right. We've talked about this before. Like, I would be a hundred percent fine. They would get more money out of me if they were like, you know, can't believe I'm saying this, if they took Jeff Hoogland's idea and made Pion N-E-A-R, <laughs> right? And we're like, okay, we're going to do remastered sets, which they announced they're not going to do anymore, mm -hmm. which was like terrible. Well, they terrible. didn't say they're not going to do anymore. They said they don't have any planned right now, which right. it's not but exactly the same thing, but... But still, like, it it was nice when we got, like, a remastered set, like, every... Like, we got two a year or something. Yeah. Like, that was that year was pretty all right. Yeah, it was right? pretty good. But, hey, we're going to do this, and we're going to throw only cards that are legal in this format on paper, or from paper. If they're on the client and they're legal in this format through any other means, right? So, like, you know, Terrarian is in Jumpstart. Mm. So Terrarian will be legal in this format because it would be legal in Pioneer. Mm -hmm. Right? 
And then they were like, these are, you can direct challenge them for free, but you could only play them in constructed events that cost you this much gold mm -hmm. or this many gems. In. Yep. You will separate me from gems yep. to play in these events. Yep. Right? And then they don't have the, the problem with like, oh, he's playing the same deck again. And also, like, all these sets rotate because, like, for the last, like, three years, it's just been like, yo, you want, you thought that last set was powerful. <laughs> <laughs> I got something for you. Yeah. Hold my beer. You hold my beer. It's like, oh, cool. And then they're like, oh, man, I don't think they could be do a set this way more, more powerful. It's like, ah. We're going to do the same thing and then put a two on the end. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, we're not going to. It's not maybe more powerful, but here are like five cards that build all new archetypes. Yeah. Oh, cool. I want to play a new archetype. I want to buy a, where is it at? A panharmonic, not a panharmonic, a parhelion. Yeah. And put it with my like rat mechanic. Yeah. Yes. Right? And so you like, they have ways that they can rotate the formats just because they keep printing cards that are nutty. Mm hmm. Right, but like if they were just like, if they gave you almost pioneer, right, like that you weren't like playing and going like what weird like or like what weird card did I just lose to like how did my a blue black opponent just catch a cast approach from the second of the second suns yeah oh because they like they magically conjured it from their four mana mana rock yeah and I guess I lost now yay. Right? Like, it would be a very, it'd be, I think, more enjoyable in a way for them to get money from people. Mm -hmm. yeah, which so is what it all comes down to. More mimic the paper, like, experience. Yeah, which they said they want to do, but I, I'm afraid they're just going to be, like, Ixalan forward. And it's like, well, no, you have Amonkhet, and you have Kaladesh, and you have a bunch of well, cards I mean, they might from... do, like, actual releases, though. So they might do, like, Amonkhet, Kaladesh... And then all the standard sets, but leave out like Jumpstart and the anthologies. Well, I mean, but like, let's. My point is like, if a card would be legal mm -hmm. from Jumpstart in that format, then you could put it in. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, if they wanted to remaster uh, Eldritch Moon, right? Then they don't have to put Terrarion in Eldritch Moon because it's already yeah, in. It's already there, yeah. Right, but I mean that's you know that's not the biggest thing, but like it would be nice if they like kind of settled on what the the set would be, and if they just did actual releases, that would also be fine. Mm -hmm. But then I think that kind of forces them to do remasters, mm -hmm. which I'm fine with as yeah, well because fine. like now you've got to like turn that format over. Um, I think, right. like, in all honesty, we were talking about how much money we've spent on Arena. Or not how much, but how little we've spent on Arena, especially lately. Um, I think I spent, I've spent i spent more money on Arena for remastered sets than I have for set releases. Um, I would... I think I'm the same way. I was going to look and see, because I have, I have all my draft numbers. So I have somewhere down here... Uh, I have my Calidus drafts. Mm -hmm. uh, I did uh, 35. Mm -hmm. I ended with the phrase, I'm done. <laughs> um, and I didn't spend much more, but I like, they basically got an extra set releases worth of play out of me. Yeah. They got 4,000 gems and 80,000 gold out of me. Mm hmm. That they would not have got otherwise. Well, I know I put money in for Kaladesh Remastered, and I know I put money in at Amonkhet Remastered, and I normally don't put money in for a regular set release. So, yeah. Again, I don't have like, records, but. Yeah. And uh, this was the last time I hit Mythic. Oh. Because I did. Was it Zendikar? I did the Zendikar release. And then into the Kaladesh. Oh, so on my twentieth like draft, in my twentieth draft, I hit Mythic. Yeah. 
had a 50% win rate in Mythic. <laughs> Thank you very much. I am stone average as a Mythic player. Um, but, yeah, like, it kind of sucks. But they yeah. they are trying to move it to a... Um, move to a format that more closely mimics paper. Because mm-hmm. I think that, like... Now, again, people are way more passionate about stuff than I am. Like, the people that are, like, that unsubscribe when, like, Seth does a, uh, Alchemy video. <laughs> yeah, I heard about and, like, I saw him talking about that. And, like, you know, other, like, the people that are just, like, super angry. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't get that. Like, yeah. pump the brakes. Right? Or the people that were, like, I'm uninstalling the client. Yeah. Like, stop. You're going to reinstall it in six weeks. Mm-hmm. Like, stop. Stop, stop, stop. Right? I, I don't understand that level of hate. I just, like, I guess I don't know who Alchemy is for. Because it seems like the super enfranchised people don't really like it. Mm Mm-hmm. But it's too expensive for, for your free to play people. Super enfranchised, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know like who this is like for. Like I I've avoided some of the alchemy like midweek events. Mm-hmm. Like not you know not and I've played some, I've avoided some. Not like out of some like huge principled stance. Well, I mean I've played them but not with alchemy cards. Yes, absolutely. I've like gone in and played like my standard deck. Yeah. And then like got my wins and it's been like, yep, we're done. Yep. Um so but like the the technology answer was was not the best. And and real quick, you mentioned this uh, I think in the pre show, right? Mm-hmm. Like um I don't think that wizards did themselves any favors. No. By sending Chris. No. From from like the server farm. Right. Out to do this, and like it's not his fault. Like he was hired to like run a digital game or program some stuff. Mm-hmm. He wasn't hired for PR. No. And like, you know, if you've watched all those like streams they've done over the years and like people they've drugged from like the back of the house to the front of the camera (laughs) right from the dungeon yeah for like every gavin yeah there's like four chrises right that are just like oh my god what the hell is going on why am i here why did you think this was a good idea yeah like we talked about this like in our chat a little bit and we talked about it in the pre-show um, like Arena might not have a Morrow or a Gavin. And they don't need to. Right. Right? Like, you know, you pay PR people mm-hmm. to like do this kind of stuff. Well, I mean, unless you have a Morrow or a Gavin. <laughs> yeah, then like you can but like but then you can use them to kind of serve as PR. Yeah. Right? But like if you like look at the people you have doing arena stuff. Mm-hmm. And you just go like, you know what? No. These people. All right, are we're gonna close. have the we're gonna have the arena guy. Like we can anticipate ninety percent of the questions we're gonna get. Yeah. We're gonna have the arena guy give us the answers to these questions. We're gonna study them, and then we're gonna send out Gavin as like the mouthpiece. I understand they're like, well, we want someone who's like a subject expert, but like the. The White House press secretary isn't a subject expert. <laughs> they go to meetings and they get briefed. Right. And then they go, like, answer questions. Yeah. And if you, like, you know, if there's the 10% of the questions that you don't, you didn't prep for, you can just not read them. Mm-hmm. Right? You don't have to, like, ask every question that gets put in chat. Right. So, like, I think the stream may have been received better. Had they had a better messenger, mm-hmm. but I also don't fault the guy who this isn't his job. Correct. Yep. Right. Like, you know, if they had you teach organic chemistry and me fix Volkswagens, <laughs> there'd be some cars on fire and some confused children. 
very much. And it so. would be neither one of ours faults. Right. <laughs> right. It would. It's like I don't do cars, and you're like, I don't do chemistry. <laughs> right. Why do you have us doing this? And Chris is just like, I don't do talking. <laughs> Obviously, not my thing. I email. Yeah, technology. <laughs> I email people. I occasionally get in Discord and Slack. That is all I do. Why did we think this is a good idea? I had my camera off in every Zoom meeting. Why did you put me on camera? Yeah. Right? So, like, I think it may have gone better if they had a better messenger. But I think at the end of the day, we talked about this before, like, Wizards was not playing in a, a an expectations game. Right. Everyone else was. And, like, Wizards did not meet, like, expectations. Yeah. And, like, so everyone felt like they got catfished. Mm -hmm. And Wizards is like, at no point did we send you a picture. I don't know what <laughs> you were expecting. We didn't catfish you. Yeah. It's like, so, what are you into? I'm into making money and occasionally making magic cards. It's like, okay, cool. And then they go to the stream and like, okay, what are you guys into? Yeah, we're still into making money and occasionally making magic cards. <laughs> oh, that's awful. How could you how could you how could do you us take like my that? Money? Yeah, it's like, no, 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 no. We told you exactly what we were about. Yeah. And then you were mad when we were like, no, no, we're still about that life. Yeah. So So I I know I messaged you and I was like, the the stream was hot garbage. Mm -hmm. And that was based on the Twitter response. Right. When I watched it, I thought that the delivery was not good, and they're like their one, their one thing of, "Hey, we heard your concerns. Give us fifty dollars." Yeah, it was kind of a slap in the face, and yeah, like that. I mean, that ruined the stream basically. Yeah, I think if that would have been at a better price point, because yeah. it, then it just led to like I tweeted some stuff that was like, "What can you get for fifty dollars?" Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, all of this other stuff. And so, like, you know, okay, like, cool. I can, like, so, like, now not only is Wizards, it's like they're competing with my for my time and my money, but now they've got, like, put, like, a very clear price tag on, like, right. you can spend $70 on a PlayStation 5 game, mm -hmm. right? Which, don't get me started. <laughs> and then, uh... Or you can spend, you know, $75 on what amounts to 18 rare wild cards and 6 mythic wild cards. And you're just like, oh, I think I'll probably get more enjoyment out of the game. Mm -hmm. Or, like, I have $50 to spend on my entertainment this month. Yeah. And it'd be really cool if I could, like, play this new magic deck on Arena... But that's going to cost me, you know, 50, all my $50 budget. Right. Or I can spend my $50 budget somewhere else. Yeah. And, like, I've talked about, like, you know, the fact that there's a million streaming services. Yeah. And, like, only, like, three of them get money from me. Right? Like, Paramount Plus has never got a dime from me. And I don't think they ever will. But they have Star Trek. But, like... <laughs> Star Trek. <laughs> but like but like if with every streaming service trying to get all of my money, yeah. Some of them they get none of it. Right. Right? And like Wizards is gonna hit this wall where there's a lot of people that are like, well Wizards is trying to get all of my money. Like if I put in five dollars, I don't get enough for my five dollars for me to warrant putting in anything. Mm -hmm. Right? And, like, you you make your money on, like, you know, on a million people spending $5, right? Like, that adds up way more. It's way easier to do that than to get, like, 100 people to spend 5000 Right. Right? And it seems like Wizards is, like, uh, leaning on, like, the whale model a lot. So, I don't know. And, again, I don't have a degree in like free to play mobile mobile games <laughs> that's a whole nother conversation right but i don't have like so i don't know what like the normal expected yeah because again 
I'm sure there's like a graph and they're like right on some point on a graph that's like perfect mm -hmm. for where they want to be. Or they're off the graph and they're trying to figure out a way to get back to it. Yeah. Right? But for like, or like everyone... Said, I mean, maybe they put this out there as like the big ask, you know what I mean? They put yeah. the, float this out there knowing nobody's going to like it, and then they get to come in and be the hero, say, no, 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 we got you. It's only 25 bucks. I mean, like, there's an argument. That's what they did with, like, the historic two wild oh, yeah. cards thing, mm -hmm. right? Because, like, there could have been an argument, like, well, the cards aren't, let's just give them, like, we should get them at a discount. Yeah. Right? Because, like, they're not standard league. We should get, like, well, no, 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 no. We want to charge a premium for them. And now we went down to they're the same as everything else. Yeah. Right? And, like, you know, uh, you know, we we cut all this money out of the pro system, but don't worry, we put it into the MPL. Kind of. <laughs> don't, don't, don't add up all the salaries. Leave us alone. Yeah. Don't ask. Right? Don't ask. And then we killed so them, like, too, so. Yeah, but they have a history of doing this kind of thing. Yeah. So it might, like I said, it might come out that it ends up being twenty five dollars, or like I, said, I think thirty five is probably where it's like slightly it's better decision. than even. Yeah. Yeah, and that's all they need it to be is a decision, because then again, like you feel like then you they have get an the option. Bet on you making the wrong decision. Exactly. <laughs> How many times will people make the wrong decision for them? I think that like it would become at that point it becomes the right decision when you you know yeah. you've done thirty five drafts mm -hmm. and you've opened one hundred and fifty packs right and then you're missing a few mythics to like play the deck you want to play because mm -hmm. like when I started like I think like for the first four or five sets like after after they in installed uh uh what is it a duplicate protection. Mm -hmm. I think I have like the next few sets. I have all of every card yeah. like are complete, and that was just due to drafts and playing. Yep. So, all right. I think with all of that, we have an economy show. Yeah, nothing we missed. Nothing you wanted to add. I don't think. I think we got everything yeah, in. We got mostly everything. I don't need to talk about my sweet high school math problem analogy. <laughs> we already kind of talked about that. Yeah, I think. Everything else on our list here, we uh, we at least mentioned. At so some point. If you guys wanted to check it out, you're uh, more than welcome to join our Patreon, patreon.com slash casual tryhard MTG. And you get to look at our show notes and see see what we skipped over, didn't talk about. Yeah. So uh, we went extra long this week, so you got bonus free show. Yeah. We're trying to stop doing that, though. Yeah. And we gotta make an we gotta make an exception when the world catches on fire, right? Yeah, maybe. I suppose. So, um, if you want to tweet at us how you hated our extra long show, you can find all of our social media links in uh, the description. Yeah. Um, also, like I mentioned, our Patreon, where you get access to show notes, you get access to our pre-show. Uh, you also get put on my mailing list when I get some swag. I feel like sending out. Uh, patreon.com slash casual tryhard mtg if you guys are looking to pick up any singles we would appreciate if you used our tcg player affiliate link tcg.casualtryhardmtg.com and i think that's gonna oh we got our youtube channel make sure you check out our videos on youtube brian's still making some draft videos we're working on our kind of format for our weekly podcast videos i actually think this one looks kind of cool looks way better than they did the first couple weeks so yeah hey we're getting there we'll and by we i mean that. you yeah <laughs> you, you really you're, you're really doing the lord's work here did you uh did you notice the artist uh credit on these cards oh nice i had <laughs> noticed that very good it's very good yeah i thought it was pretty good so yeah with that make sure you check out our youtube channel uh, casual triad mtg on youtube and i think that's going to be a show i think that's it so with that we'll catch you on the internet we'll catch you on the internets <laughs>